Hello and welcome back. Here we're going to see two clips with Anne Hathaway, the actor, and we'll see a clip where the interviewer has very strong rapport with her and another clip where the interviewer breaks rapport. So first we're going to see the broken rapport interviewer and we're going to talk, well, we're going to show you how different these two clips are. And so the first one, she opens up talking about describing the movie and her experience making it as beautiful and operatic. And this is important because when people are communicating with us, they're giving us clues about what direction they want to take the conversation and which direction they find interesting. He's going to miss that subtle cue and you'll see what happens next. And beautiful and operatic and I'm so unbelievably happy to be a part of it. You are in phenomenal shape. Thank you. You're, you're very gracious. You, you, okay, so see how she kind of is taken aback by the comment. I'm so. But it doesn't really land like a strong compliment. You so. You are in phenomenal shape. Thank you. You're, you're very. Gracious. She looks almost you're, skeptical you, of him saying. You're always that. in great shape, but you had to make sure you were in perfect shape for this one, didn't you? It wasn't about being in perfect shape. It was about being able to do the stunts and the fighting perfectly. What was. So when he mentions her perfect shape, she again shows no openness to the direction he is taking. So she throws him a bit of a life preserver here by offering a change of topic. She says it isn't about the perfect fitness, but rather about her stunt work, which I assume is pretty amazing for her. This is another cue that he missed about the direction she wants to go. That suit like it had to be comfortable to wear, but it looked like it was so form fitting, was it? It was form-fitting. Um, I mean, it's not a pair of sweatpants. I wouldn't describe it as that kind of comfortable. But, um, you know, it was it was fine. I think Christian had it worse in the bat suit than I, than I did. I didn't have my ears covered. When you... So he asked about the suit, which, again, is bringing the focus back to her figure and her fitness level and the more superficial aspects of the character that she plays. And she tries to shift the focus away from her suit and onto an aspect of her co-star suit. But again, he'll kind of bring it back to the fitness. You found out you were going to play Catwoman. Mm -hmm. uh, had it worse in now the there, I'd like than you to I, see I did. her reaction to covered. being asked you about playing Catwoman. You found out you were going to play Catwoman. Mm -hmm. Okay, big smile here. Very excited to talk about playing Catwoman. So what's important here to notice is that when you're speaking to other people, they're constantly giving you cues. And if you focus in on the body language, you'll see cues that are, you you can't really dispute them. You know, sometimes you can get a little bit too detailed with body language where you're trying to read too deep into things, but it's very hard to mistake the body language here compared to what she was exhibiting earlier. A lot of discomfort earlier. So if you key into that, you'll realize that people are giving you signals all the time. Now, the other question is, why is she smiling? Well, for one, he seems to have taken the hint uh, to, to go away from the fitness aspect onto less superficial aspects of the conversation and into her unique experience. So this is important. So when you're speaking to another person, if you speak to them about something that is unique to them, only unique to them, you're going to get a different type of reaction. Now, of course, you have to make sure it's context appropriate and that it doesn't go too personal to where it would be strange. Like if you just met somebody, it may be strange to go deep into something that's unique to them or at least not personal. It could be unique without being incredibly personal or deep, right? But here he's talking to her about something nobody else in the world can say. Very few people can say they've ever been cast as Catwoman. She seems to want to talk about that experience. Uh is, is there a certain regimen you put yourself through in terms of the... And then he drops the ball by going immediately back to the fitness, and you can tell her body language diet, response to the it. the workout. Smiles gone. What is the feline fitness regime? <laughs> <laughs> nice big fake um, a lot, laugh there. It's, it's, it's all the boring stuff that no one ever wants to do. It's just watch what you eat and get yourself to the gym. Any particular... So she gives him a very short answer to the question, which is a sign as well that there's not a lot of rapport there. Just a very short answer. She looks very serious. Doesn't look animated like before when he was asking her about 
playing Catwoman. Work out. Are you trying to lose weight? Well, like, what's what's a lot? It's 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 all the boring stuff that no one ever wants to do. It's just watch what you eat and get yourself to the gym. Any particular workout? Are you trying to lose weight? Well, like, what's what's the deal, man? You look great. No, no, no. I, no, no. Seriously, that, we well, have to talk you. about this. What what do you want? Are you trying to fit into a cat suit? I might be. You are. Oh, oh. okay. Well, um, secrets out. It's going to take about ten months. Yeah. At least it did for me. So I love that clip there. So he brings up the diet. You know, it. She uses a pattern called apply to self, and it's where you take the criteria that the other person is discussing and you kind of flip it around on them by accusing them of needing the thing that they're talking about like in his case fitness advice and this was a really artful way of highlighting that he was asking about the fitness stuff to an absurd degree even after multiple life preservers she threw out to help him to change the topic onto something that was more productive and frankly more respectful of this type of interview and he you know failed every single time so the way to use this technique that she uses here is if someone is asking a lot of personal questions, you can playfully misinterpret their reason for being so interested in that information. Or you can even imply that they're secretly obsessed about that thing to an unhealthy degree. So let's say you're being accused of something you didn't do or asked a lot of questions about something you didn't do. You could say, you know, are you really, uh, you know, you sound really worried about me doing X, Y, Z thing. Should I be worried that you are doing X, Y, Z thing? Should I be concerned since this is so important? You know, oh, okay, good, because it seems like you were really obsessed about that X, Y, Z thing. So the next clip I wanted to show side by side so you can really see the difference. And here Anne is in a different spirit altogether. Here she's friendly, she's animated, and she's asked the same kinds of fitness questions, but in a different context, in a different, maybe just a different time in her career where it has a different meaning. But let's watch the clip. Fans are really excited about this. Uh, it's, it was a couple days ago we finally saw the first photos of you as Catwoman. How do you fit into that suit? <laughs> Uh, it takes three of us. <laughs> now, part of the reason she's laughing here, too, is because maybe she hasn't been asked this question a million times by different interviewers. So that could be part of it, too, why she's in, an, in such a more positive state here. A lot of uh, lead time. Um, uh, Sit-ups, tricep curls, and, you know. But you're in phenomenal bench, shape right now. Bench kicks, I don't know. How, how much uh, weight have you kicks. lost to get into this shape right now? You did not just ask me that no, I'm question. Just saying, you're like, <gasps> what a forward whoa. young man you are! My goodness, I'm how sorry. much weight! I'm not saying you needed to lose weight. I'm just saying that you look. I've, I've worked very hard to become Selena Kyle. I know you have. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm sorry if I offended you. You didn't at all. I just. Uh, okay, very interesting clip. The thing to keep in mind here is that he was able to get away with much bolder question than the other person. He specifically asked how many pounds of weight she had to lose. And part of the reason he got away with that, it might not have been so good if he had asked like four or five times like the other guy about these aspects of her suit. But she was physically showing a lot of receptivity even before he asked that question. So it's possible that the boldness that he had in asking that was calibrated based on the way she was responding uh, earlier in the interaction. So that's very important is that you develop the ability to kind of tap into the subtle cues that other people are giving us. Like if she's laughing this openly and this receptively and showing positive body language, then yeah, maybe you can ask a bolder question or maybe he just asked it because you know, he just wasn't thinking that's possible too. But obviously she's more predisposed to this interviewer than the other. And I don't know if that's just because, you know, maybe because he's good looking or because she just hit it off with him before the, the camera started rolling. Kind of hard to say, but the point is this, is that if we pay attention to what other people are giving us, we'll be that much better at social interactions, that much more confident and part of what that's what is involved with that is developing a good lens for this type of behavior from others and understanding how these frames 
our set behind the scenes in an interaction. And if you're interested in learning frame control and things like this, like how to gain social confidence, please like and subscribe to the video and to the channel. And thank you so much for watching.